Welcome back to The O Show, everything crypto every day. I'm your host with the most, Wendy O. And of course, I have to give a super cringy intro because it wouldn't be crypto YouTube without it. But y'all know we do a lot of clickbait here, but the content always remains the same. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, set alerts. This is not financial advice, blah, 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 out the side of your neck. But anyways, we're gonna cover Bitcoin's weekly close because we didn't do it yesterday because I was in Florida. I'm actually gonna be leaving LA County, relocating myself and my five-year-old to Florida because I wanna go where I'm treated best and it is an absolute hot mess in California. I'm not even gonna tell you what happened at the airport. But anyways, we normally live stream Sunday at 10 a.m. PT. I didn't get a chance to do so. So we're gonna cover Bitcoin. We're gonna cover some altcoins, ADA, XRP, Phantom, YFI, because there's a bunch of drama with Andre yesterday. Who knows what the heck is happening? But we need to cover, we need to update it. So let's go ahead and do so. This is our Bitcoin weekly chart. I told you guys I didn't like this weekly candle. Somebody said it is a bullish hammer, but at the same time, I don't know, think this is a bullish hammer if it is one. I don't like the fact that we had this large wick all the way up to 45.2, but we actually closed here at $38,000. It's absolutely ridiculous. It's basically telling me that the bulls lost, the bears won, and we are not bullish right now, but that could change. It could change, but it was also a perfect rejection kind of off of the EMA 30, but it looks like we're actually going to hit the target of $37,000, dollars and I would really, really watch this weekly opening here back from Jan 24th and Jan 17th, because it looks like we can continue need to head down right now we are in a downtrend still from the swing wick high $69,000 back on the week of November 8th now taking a look at the daily chart daily chart is like she's trying to hold on but she's also looking kind of bearish I see the RSI the MFI heading downward as far as the 12 hour chart goes 12 hour chart is also giving me bearish vibes so it does look like we could potentially bottom off at this $36,000 area however I noticed another area of support at $33,000 um, even $35,000 so I'd be very very cautious kind of watch where that brings us taking a look at the six hour chart she is headed downwards but also at the same time market cipher is literally Really like kind of flat literally kind of flat and to be honest with you unless we actually flip forty two thousand dollars i'm going to be short term bearish right now so now that that's said and done with bitcoin bearish we're going to take a look at altcoins because when altcoins are down generally bitcoin is down because we see all of that happen and again bitcoin still does control the market and taking a look at our coin 360 chart over here which of course it's taking a minute to load you're gonna see so Bitcoin is down to 3.1% and everything else is in the red, which that makes about sense. But anyways, let's take a look at XRP. So a lot of people are excited about XRP because um, Brad um, Brad Garlinghouse came out and said, we have to win this. The SEC is trash, which 100% they're trash. I'm just paraphrasing. But that's basically what he said. The SEC will literally throw out all these crazy arguments, but not do anything positive to help people with regulation. And they literally knew what XRP was doing, but they let them go through with the pre-sale, didn't have an issue with it. And now all of a sudden they have an issue with the pre-sale in 2020. That's where the lawsuit is stemming from, but it's ridiculous. Anyways, as far as XRP goes, we drew this chart quite a while back on the daily and honestly, we're still in range between 68 cents and 80 cents. Again, if we break below this area here at about 69 cents, um, we could get down to 62 and then possibly down here 56 to 51. If we lose this area of support here at 56 to 51, forget it. We're going to absolutely nuke. But again, you guys, in order for me to be bullish on XRP, I need to see a break minimum at like 77 cents. Taking a look at the 12 hour chart, 12 hour chart is also giving me a little bit of bearish vibe. So we could get that retest to 63 before heading to 55. Five cents. Now at the four hour chart, four hour chart is kind of stagnant, but again, I'd watch to see what happens here. So again, I would kind of wait for the daily close to see what happens, but be cautious if we lose the 68 cents support, we'll go to 64 and then hopefully hold in this 56 to 51 cent area. Again, I'm bearish unless we break above this beautiful trend line here. Now, Zcash, the reason why we're talking about Zcash is because they are gonna be adding support to Trezor, so you can actually store your Zcash on the Trezor wallet. The interesting thing about Zcash, it is a privacy coin, so there's some kind of issues with that because it's hard to get the code right, with their shielding, yada yada, too long, don't read, all of that type of stuff. But at the same time, a lot more people are gonna be interested in privacy coins based on the fact all these sanctions, all these crazy things are happening and it's kind of scary. But again, I actually own Zcash. I think somebody sent me one Zcash um, for Valentine's Day or something, but I had to create a wallet for it and it's a desktop wallet I have on another computer or you can do a paper wallet with Zcash. So paper wallets are always the safest as far as security goes, but at the same time, human error can kind of make it gnarly. 
Also, too, I do believe Z cash is in the gray, gray, gray scale trust, which is important to note. So this thing will not go to zero. But honestly, the chart does not look sexy any way, shape or form. The fact that we are in we are in this this downtrend. Here we go downtrend here and we had like a pop pop up to 131 and then a pop up to 129 rejected essentially and then we're heading downward so again unless we get above this trend line somehow at least like 117 we're going to continue to head down and the areas i look at 95 dollars and 82 dollars if 82 dollars breaks that's a pretty important trend line and it's going to get really, really gnarly. So right now, um, you can go ahead and draw these support and resistance, or excuse me, the support areas out if we actually do break up below $82. But honestly, I feel like we're going to continue to head down. Uh, taking a look at the 12 hour chart, the 12 hour chart is starting to show a little bit of a fight. So there might be an option for us to kind of break out, but we'll see how that goes. Y'all know how the markets are super irrational. And taking a look at the four hour chart, it looks like MACD, she kind of wants to like bear cross, but not really, but she's still heading downwards. So I would probably wait to see what's going on unless you're going to scalp this i'm not interested in scalping or doing anything right now with the move to florida and everything going on my trading is super minimal but at the same time i gotta do what's best for me and my family and i might take some scalps with bitcoin we'll see maybe this week but anyways we're headed downward so things are not looking good this would be invalidated if we kind of get back above 126 to about 113. now taking a look at phantom so what happened with phantom one of the developers andrew kraji i can't even say his name but anyways he kind of is abandoning not abandoning phantom but 25 other um projects utilizing phantom i think or similar to it and it's kind of concerning because it's like are these projects really decentralized or are they not decentralized but at the same time, there's humans involved and that kind of makes the centralization hard. But anyways, um, the project is suffering. I do think that Phantom does have decent um, fundamentals. Some people will say it is a copy of HBAR. I have a fat bag of HBAR, not a fat bag, but I got a little bag. Um, I don't have any Phantom, so I personally don't care like what happens. I think my moon bag, it's a moon bag with HBAR, pretty sure it is. So it doesn't matter what happens with it. So personally, I don't care. I just feel bad for people that invested in this and they lost a lot of money, especially with this gnarly drop from yesterday. It was like, we were at 167 and now we're currently at like 131 so it stinks but anyways macd's bearish our size bearish we're heading downwards we're probably going to tap on the support area at 123 if we lose that you can look closer to 107 and then possibly 96 cents over here which just makes sense because look at this 96 cent area back on may 10th we had these candles that popped up or excuse me may 8th may 9th <laughs> may 10th we had these candles that popped up to 95 cents and then we dumped so it's an important area taking a look at the z12 hour chart 12 hour chart is also looking pretty bearish like we're going to tap onto that 124 area taking a look at the four hour chart four hour chart is also not looking great i Ideally, what would be dope would be for us to consolidate a 124 to 154, consolidate, consolidate, do something like this. Where's my, my cute little thing? Do this and then pop up. But honestly, it's not looking super good right now. And me personally, unless I get that break out above, 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 um, 150, 55 ish, then I'm going to be kind of bearish with Phantom right now. But again, this is not long term. This is kind of short term for now. But again, we do need to kind of get back above that area. But again, hopefully we range. Anyways, taking a look at, let's actually look at why FI you're in finance. So this is like a super DeFi project. And as you can see, it's literally dumping. This pattern, generally, I like the consolidation, the sideways. This is good because it could indicate a possible breakout. Um, but also too, I don't like these massive pumps and these massive dumps. So taking a look at why FI, what I did is I went ahead and drew a grand daddy trend line and that's perfectly lining up with these swing wick lows over here and this swing wick low that occurred on february 24th and if we break this trend line we will test 15,554 and possibly lower levels but honestly this doesn't look good and you can even tell by this trend line at the top over here we have the swing look high may 12th um this price action over here january 1st we're in a downtrend we haven't been able to break above it so things are not looking super sexy with your finance one thing i will note is be careful guys because a lot of these projects will end up going away especially when we get the real bear market real bear market will come this year we do have a chance of hitting like eighty thousand to a hundred thousand dollars with bitcoin which is fine but at the same time a lot of these projects are going to completely go away i don't think phantom will go away yearn i have no idea if it's going to go away I know it's really important for DeFi, but at the same time, it's like, I'm not really not sure what it does. It seems kind of complex. And unless there's some sort of program for the average people to where they don't need to kind of really understand how your finance works, I don't know if this it's gonna make it or not. But anyways, that's my opinion. Do whatever you guys want with it. 
everything just seems kind of shady. So as far as the 12 hour chart, 12 hour chart, we saw these two swing wick highs at close to like $19,000 and now we're still back trading at $18,000. So that's not looking super, super good. I'm gonna try to draw another trend line here for you over here and see. So again, I would kind of need to see a breakout of this trend line, probably like $21,000 in the 12 hour. Who knows if that's even going to happen. Taking a look at the four hour chart, it's like we're kind of flat over here. So let's go back to the daily zoom out. And the reason why I'm not doing super low time frames is because um, this is going to be supposed to be a short video. I don't even know how long I'm going. It is only 10 minutes. Let's do this faster, faster, faster. All right. So anyways, we're headed downwards unless we get back above $21,000 and then we can retest like $28,000. We will continue to nuke. I hope we don't hit $6,800, but it is looking like we are going to break support at 15 and possibly kiss um, 15 too, I believe or sorry, it was possible we were gonna break 17,000 and then kiss like 152, sorry about that. So that's what I would kind of look for. We're kind of in a downtrend, it's not looking good, not looking sexy. And I'm even gonna put on the EMAs to see if I can see anything else, because maybe I'm missing something. Yeah, this is bearish, look at this. We have the EMA over here, it's literally in a free fall, not looking good. But again, we could have a bounce, who knows. Bitcoin does continue to dip, we will have some more dipping. This is Cardano. Cardano hit our target of 83 cents. And then we had that beautiful pop up to 96 cents and we're breaking below. As I said, there's not a whole lot of support here with Cardano at 83 cents to 38 cents. We do have these all these little tiny, teeny, tiny areas which you can go ahead and if you want, this is one of the tricks that I do when I feel kind of lazy and I don't want to draw my, um, my Fibonacci extensions. Whoopsie, whoopsie, whoopsie. Let me pull it, pull it, pull it. Sorry, I'm getting tired now. Okay. So this is what you can do. You can simply pull up the Fibonacci extensions. They are symmetrical. So you can pull them up however you want, but it's going to give you areas of support and resistance. And if we kind of look over here, we can see 73 cents, um, which kind of lies up with this top over here, 64 cents, um, 62 cents, all that stuff. So you can use these if you want, if that makes sense for you, but it looks like we are surely free falling. We probably will tap 73 cents unless we rebound. Taking a look at the 12 hour chart, 12 hour chart, MACD is literally just kind of getting started to head bear cross and gonna head back down. Um, let's take a look at the four hour chart. Four hour chart is also not looking super, super great. The only way I'd be bullish on Cardano is if we hold support 75 cents and then retest 82 and then head back up. But realistically, even though they have a lot of development going on, there's a lot of wallets created on a Cardano, a lot of GitHub activity is still not where I want it to be. Um, so I'd be very, very cautious here. That was my mini market update. Right now I have a bit of a bearish view regarding Bitcoin. Um, I wanna see what happens if when we tap that 37 to $36,000 area, if we're able to kind of reverse. If not, I would expect some more downward action, hopefully we kind of sustain. But realistically, $29,000 is super, super crucial to Bitcoin. If we break below that, we're gonna see some ugly stuff happening. I'm also feeling bear market vibes, guys, but at the same time with all the crazy stuff that's happening in the country, we might, or actually globally, we might not get a real bear market, we might get really gnarly price action like we saw kind of like back in May. So we'll have to see what happens. And again, please remember, this is a trader's market. If you are not a trader, you might want to take um, take a break and sit on the sidelines and educate yourself, read Investopedia 10 minutes a day, teach yourself how to trade, but it's literally a trader's market. And if you don't pay attention, you will get absolutely wrecked. Um, dollar cost averaging right now, if you want a dollar cost average, that's your business, but be very, very careful and have an entry plan and an exit plan just in case these things go to absolute zero. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.